Welcome back to Oz Reacts. Got another reaction video for you. This is seven stories that prove Larry Bird was the greatest trash talker of all time. I see you guys are loving these Larry Bird videos. Make sure you drop some more suggestions in the comments. And you know, it could be Larry Bird, it could be others, it could be comedy, whatever. I'll check it out. I'm gonna give the people what they want. So without further ado, let's check it out. What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are going to be talking about Larry Bird. Now, Larry Bird was a three-time NBA champion. He was a three-time yes, NBA, he was. but perhaps most importantly, he was the world's best trash talker. So here are seven stories that prove that Larry Bird okay. was a trash talking legend. Best, that's, that's a bold seven, claim, but let's see. He constantly insulted the people guarding him. If you want to get into a player's head, there is no better way than to trash talk your opponent and then back it up. And Larry Bird well, that'd be pretty obvious. Of trash talking his man and then backing it up. For instance, he once scored 40 points and had a triple double against a young Sean Kemp. Late in the game, hey, he Sean Kemp. Indiana, attempted to defend a tough Larry Bird shot. Bird sunk the shot and running back up the court told Kemp, I'm the best effing player from Indiana. In a game against the 76ers in 1984, Ooh. Bird found himself like that. against Julius Irving and dominated him. As Dr. He J. After point, Bird kept repeating two numbers to Dr. J. The number of points Bird had and the number of points Irving had. Ooh. By the end of the That's third fucked quarter, up. I'm like, oh, numbers have become 42 and 6. Damn. Points for Bird, 6 for Irving. At this point, Danny Ainge claims that Bird told Irving to retire, which led to this. So, wait a minute. Ooh. <laughs> Dr. J, what did that smoke? Known as the Rifleman, who told reporters that the Rifleman is coming and he's going bird hunting. Hearing this, Larry approached Person before tip off, saying, Hey, Chuck, I have a present for you. He then waited until Person was subbed out, spotted up right next to him. No, I'm sorry, give me a second, bro. That's hilarious, bro. He was. <laughs> He was living rent free in Dr. J's head, bro. That's hilarious. Where he was sitting and drained a three. As the ball went in, Bird turned to person and said, Merry effing Christmas. Hey, you got a gift for your ass. Trash talk coaches. As Larry Bird became more confident, trash talking players just became too easy. So he began to trash talk coaches. Against the Bulls, Bird found himself matched up against Ben Corquette, a noticeably poor defender. He took exception to this and expressed to then Bulls coach Doug Collins, Ben Corquette, are you effing kidding me? Before dropping 33 points in the first half. Against the Pistons, a young Dennis Rodman tried his best to stop Bird, Ooh. smothering him when he had the ball and trying to deny him when he did. Still, Bird found a way to get into Rodman's head, screaming at his teammates, I'm wide open, even as Rodman was attached to his hip. And Ooh, he acted as if he was wild. wide open too, sinking four straight shots in Rodman's face before asking Pistons coach Chuck Daly, who's guarding me, Chuck, Chuck? Daly. Is anyone guarding me? You better get someone on me or I'm going to go for Sixth and right, scoring damn, the against that's the kind Jazz, of foul. Bird sunk a shot and said, When he ran by the bench, he goes, That's a heat check. Before turning to Jazz coach Frank Layden and saying, Hey, Frank, don't you have anybody on that bench? Go I've seen this in another video. Layden responded with, Frank looked at the bench and goes, Nope. <laughs> Number five, the three point shootout came. In the 1986s, um, this was in the other video too. I remember this. All Star Weekend for the first time, known as one of the game's deadliest shooters, Larry Bird was of course chosen to compete. And while now many see the three point contest as a friendly competition, Bird saw it as just another way to prove his greatness. Leading up to the event, Bird spent weeks practicing from the five spots he would be taking his shots, making sure he was at his best for the contest. While Bird was already supremely confident in his shot. This practice convinced him that there was no way he could lose. He got a smooth jumper. And he made sure well, duh, but... in the contest knew this. We had a that goes without saying. Contest at the All-Star break. And Larry walks in and says, I hope all you guys in here are thinking about second place because I'm winning this. In other words, he was saying oh. that first place was already locked up. And it was. As Bird began his final round by draining 11 threes in a row. He won the contest while still on the middle rack. And even showboated by banking in the money ball from the right wing as he finished his last rack he raised his arms and yelled i am the three-point king and he was because the next year bird won the contest again throughout the entire shootout he never removed his warm-up jacket demonstrating his unwavering confidence and again he called his victory before him telling dale ellis there's no need to talk this time we all know who's going to win and in 1988 in pursuit of his third three-point nah, that's some crazy confidence tries, right there jacket on 
sunk his final money ball to give him his third straight title and the official crown of the NBA's three-point king. Number four, welcome to the league. By all accounts, Larry Bird loved to trash talk all of his opponents, but he had a special place in his heart for trash talking rookies. While recalling a game against Bird in his rookie season, Clyde Drexler summed up just what it was like for a rookie to be matched up against Larry Bird. I was guarding in my rookie year. He looked at me and he goes, you can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh, Boy, you're, you're so confident. You're <laughs> confident. You're, you're a rookie. You don't know anything. After that statement, Bird began to rain in shot after shot over Clyde, ending with... Coach took me at the game. He walks by and he's laughing at me. <laughs> in his first game as a Hawk, Dominique Wilkins went to shake Bird's hand at the opening tip. Bird looked at Wilkins stone-faced and ignored him. Later in the game, Wilkins knocked Bird to the floor on a drive to the basket. Larry got up and said, I like you, rookie. You've got guts but I'm still going to go for 40 on you tonight. He was one point off of this promise, scoring 39 on Dominique. Man, that's, a, that's, for that's a win for Wilkins, though. The Pacers, another notorious trash talker, <laughs> Reggie Miller, attempted to get into Bird's head at the free throw line during a little bit. Year. Bird stopped, looked at Reggie, and said, Rook, I am the best effing shooter in the league. In the Damn, league. Damn, that's Understand to Reggie Miller, too. up here trying to effing tell me something? He then, of course, proceeded to sink his next free throw. And this trash talk did not only extend to rookies, it extended to college players too. In preparation for the 1984 Olympics, oh. the college filled United States team guy got no chill. played against a team of current pros to practice. During the warm-ups, a ball bounced from the Olympic team's end to the pros end. Michael Jordan chased after it, and then... The ball had to be picked up by Larry Bird. And Michael went up a few feet away from Larry Bird and held out his hands. And Bird took the ball and fired it back down the court over... Jordan's head. Oh, I don't give a damn who you are. Number three, stay true to his word. Throughout his career, Larry Bird earned the reputation as one of the greatest clutch players in the NBA's history. Countless times the Celtics placed the ball in his hands and countless times he came through. As his teammate ML Carr said, Because you know if you ever got in trouble, give the ball to Larry and get out of his way. And after a while, just scoring in the clutch became too easy for Bird. He wanted more. I get a charge and I'll tell some other. So on December 30th, 1986, in the final <laughs> moments of a tie game against the Sonics, Bird walked out of the huddle to the man guarding him, Xavier McDaniel, and said, Yeah, he's how we get it right here. I'm shooting right in your face. And that's exactly what he did. Why the Bird has the basketball. In fact, he not only shot the game winner over McDaniel, he also shot it over McDaniel's over two team people. too, proving that not even two players could stop Bird in the clutch. And while this shot was incredible, the next season Larry managed to top it. In the second game of the 1998 season, the Celtics trailed the Bullets by three with just seconds remaining. The ball was passed to Bird, who sunk a three to tie the game, but his coach had called a timeout. No matter. Bird proceeded to sink a running three-pointer to tie the game, sending it into overtime. And in overtime, with just two seconds remaining, the Celtics again trailed when... He looks at uh, the bench and says, uh, Hey guys, when I come back after timeout, I'm going to go right to the same spot. I'm going to kick it in. He told Washington, I'm going to get the ball. You can guess what happened next. And where do we go? Uh, it's going to go to Bird. He's got a shot. Get it! Number two. The game was just too easy. That's a As bad before, man. Larry Bird often found the game's most crucial moments to be too easy. And when the stakes were even lower, such as an average regular season game, Bird had to find more difficult ways to keep himself motivated. For instance, according to Danny Ainge, oh, he used yeah. to come in the locker room, he'd be getting his ankles taped, and he'd say, you know, hey, ball boy, you're running go find the scoring record in this building. You know, he needed those kind of challenges. Now, perhaps the most extreme example of this came on Valentine's Day in 1986. The Celtics had just finished a long road trip, so Larry decided to go out with heat bang. And Larry told all of us players, and the media too, we were all standing around waiting to leave. He said, tomorrow night's the last game of the trip. I'm going to play this one left-handed at least, at least three, three quarters. Yes, Larry Bird promised to score every point against the Blazers with just his left hand, except for jump shots, which is exactly what he did. With both teams aware of his intentions, Bird scored 22 points with just his left hand, ending the night with 47 Damn. total points along with 47? 11 assists and the game-winning shot. And number God one, he damn. should have gone for 60. On March 3rd, 1985, Larry Bird's teammate Kevin McHale broke the Celtics franchise scoring record by scoring 56 points in a game. However, he took himself out of the game with just a few minutes remaining. Bird later told the media, you should have stayed in there. 
should have got 60. The two had a friendly rivalry, and Larry could not believe that Mikhail would take himself out with such an obvious milestone in sight. So, because he was Larry Bird, he decided to go for it himself. Just nine days later, while matched up against the Hawks and Dominique Wilkins, Bird put on one of the greatest uh, regular season performances. Got in Dominique the Wilkins back, I guess. Doc Rivers put it. Who's calling shots off the glass? Who's next? Where do you want this one from? Uh, and he just made one after another. Yes, on this night, Bird was on fire, sinking almost impossible shot after shot. In the fourth quarter, he found himself with 52 points and then made this. A shot so impressive that the players on the Hawks bench fell over in disbelief. These Hawks players would eventually cheer on Bird, a player on the opposing team. Then, with 56 points and a chance to break Mikhail's record, Bird went over to the Hawks and said, He called it, uh, he said, Rainbow uh, Trainer's Lap. Meaning, that's where he would shoot it. From the trainer's lap, Bird proceeded to catch the ball and do this, sinking a shot before falling into the trainer's lap. Meanwhile, the Hawks players high fived each other. Yo, it's a wonder. Yeah, now, this shot was way <laughs> that's really crazy. Down, though Bird sunk both free throws and ended the game with 60 points on a buzzer beater, a Celtics franchise record that still stands. And thank you guys for watching. And man, does that not make you miss that's the way nuts. the NBA used to be when uh, trash yeah. talk was basically encouraged and not fined for any future NBA prospects? watching this video trash talk we love to see it and as always to my loyal subscribers i love you guys your support motivates me to make videos you're, you're amazing and if you haven't already subscribed and you're an nba fan i think you'll love the channel i make videos like this i do a bunch of other nba content check it out so i'm not saying you i like this guy i like this video uh, i might you know I, I'm, a, I'm a subscribe yo oh you already got 1.7 million so whatever but yeah man that was a good video i'm not gonna front and uh and he's right i do miss the old nba where people used to trash talk way more and man like burr he's a like that's a different level of confidence and like to be able to like like people trash talk nowadays but the level of trash talk he was doing where he's saying everything he's about to do like yo he said rainbow trainers lap and did it and then it's, it's that's that's insane. Like literally calling out everything you about to do to a team, playing left handed. People, you're not gonna see that in today's NBA. You're not gonna see that for a long time. At least that's what I think. Nobody's on that level of confidence, and it's really crazy, man. And you know, people nowadays talk about the old NBA, how like the level of competition was and all that. This is kind of crazy. I'm not gonna front, man. <laughs> This, that's a lot right there. Man, Larry Bird strikes again. He was like, he's shocking me, man. Um, let's be real. But um, yeah, that was a great video. And um, yeah, I might react to some more Larry Bird videos. Thanks, I appreciate the person who recommended this video. And you know, he did a lot, a lot of effort, put like three links in there. I had to at least choose one. So I appreciate you. Appreciate anybody else who, you know, leaves a suggestion on what to watch. Uh, anybody else who likes, comments, subscribes, I appreciate all y'all. And, you know, trying to build this channel up to, you know, hey, hopefully this guy here, 1.7 mil, who knows? So, uh, you know, it would do me a huge favor if you guys take a little bit of time to just press that red subscribe button. Doesn't mean anything to you, but it means a world to me. And, Nah, appreciate you guys. Stay tuned for more. <laughs> <laughs>